Chuckloaf 12,000, well, 1,200 films podcast. 12,000 is a bit much. But uh, back again with my co-host, Baba the Cat. Hopefully she'll keep her distance for most of the show, but... Oh, God, here she goes. But I'm keeping my eye on her. I got some cat treats just in case so I can distract her if I need to. But, uh... What do we got on the show today? Let's get going. Uh, number one, Black Fly. 2017 audience rating on Rotten Tomatoes of 67%. There was no critic rating. Um, this film is kind of still very underground, but it was well made, well produced, well put together. It's not quite really a horror. Well... It was dark, it was violent, yeah, maybe it was. Um, this brother goes to live with his other brother and his girlfriend because um, the living situation fell apart and I'm not giving away anything you don't see in the trailer so don't. I'm not spoiling nothing. Kitty! Here we go. Then, um, so he goes to live with his brother and a girlfriend and um, these neighbors start messing with him. Messing with the, the brother that had already lived there. And um, things escalate and they get out of control and it kind of goes from there. And then when it spirals, it spirals. But um, yeah, excellent little film, Black Fly. On the rating system, I'll reiterate, it's the bottom is dumpster fire garbage, then can't quite recommend, then okay if desperate, then put on watch list, and then put on top of watch list. This I would put... On the watch list. Definitely worth a view. These next two movies are called The Barn. We'll start with the 2016 version. This was on a lot of people's list as uh, top 10 for that year. And I hadn't seen it, so I figured I'd find it and watch it. These uh, kids go messing around. It starts with a flashback of these kids messing around in this old barn. And they, of course, they conjure up something. And they conjure up these spirits of whatever from the barn it's like this scarecrow and then there's this hillbilly and there's something else <laughs> then of course the flash forwards 20 years later and things start up again and it's uh it gets crazy when this concert there's a concert going on in this barn so these monsters kind of block off the barn and start killing mass numbers of people which is fine, you know, it's, it's a whore, it's supposed to be like this, and that's what happens, and it's getting a sequel, 2020, The Barn 2, so, uh, it had no rating on Rotten Tomatoes, IMDB gave it a 5.4 out of 10, I would say it's okay for Desperate, it is what it is, will I watch the sequel? Probably. Um, but yeah, it was, it was fine. Um, now, The Other Barn. The 2018 version of, it's a different movie altogether of The Barn. But when I was looking up the other one, I saw there was another Barn movie. And the cover looked awesome. So I figured, let's give it a spin. And it's also a horror. Well... Doing research for this show, I found that you can't find anything on this movie. This movie might as well just not exist. But it is on Amazon Prime. It does. It is there. It has a pulse, but just barely. Um. Oh boy, this very, very, very low budget film is about this farmer that lets people bring in their zombified young adults. Because apparently the zombie apocalypse happened, but it only affects young adults, and it doesn't really make them super crazy, it just makes them kind of weird. So the parents can't deal, so they drop it off, drop them off at this farmer that kind of locks them in his barn and just kind of keeps an eye on them. Make sure they don't starve to death. So like, throw a fish carcass in there so they can eat. It's bizarre. And there's also this serial killer going around. As I've said before, when there's only six characters, it's pretty easy to figure out who is doing the serial killing. 
But yeah, boy, this movie, this movie's bottom. This movie's the bottom of the dump, pure dumpster fire garbage. Please avoid. Do not watch this. I can't believe I got through it. Wow. Moving on. Land Mine Goes Click. What a bizarre title for an interesting movie. Um, critic rating of 40%. Audience rating of 89%. Came out in 2015. Also available on Amazon. Um, this, I believe they're a newly engaged couple. And their third wheel best friend guy are going on this little trip. And this all happens quickly in the movie. So again, I'm not giving away anything. So, um... So the, the the newlywed guy figures finds out that the the, the 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 woman and the best friend had a little fling. So uh, he feels upset. So he kind of conjures up this scheme to get his to get to this little trip, and he gets his buddy to stand on this landmine, and then um, he does. And he says, that landmine is armed. You can't get off it. I got to go find help. And then he just leaves him. And he leaves his his, his his fiance there. And he leaves the guy there. Just The guy's just standing on this landmine. And he's afraid, he's afraid to move. But the, the guy's doing this on purpose to get revenge on them. Because he knows about the affair. Then he just takes off. With no real plans to return. <laughs> You're thinking, wow, that's the biggest douchebag I've ever seen in film. No, no, no. The biggest douchebag in film appears later. And that's all I'm going to say. If that isn't a plug for a movie, good grief. This film is mighty interesting and goes in some interesting directions. I, I'd have to say, put it on the top of the watch list. This was... An amazing view. Landmine goes click. Yeah. Wow. Moving on. Searching. Again, not a horror. An intense drama thriller. Uh, critic rating of 91%. Audience rating of 88%. So, yeah, people like this. And it's kind of a mystery, too. Mystery, suspense, thriller. Uh, stars John Cho from the White Castle movies and Deborah Messing from Will and Grace. It's nice to see her still getting work. But John Cho's uh, kid kind of just vanishes. And he's helping out with the case. And the cops don't seem to mind this, which seems unusual. But he's going through all her Facebook stuff, all her information, all her Instagram stuff. And he's finding out no one really cared for his daughter she didn't really have any friends but that's not stopping him and uh it takes a few weird twists but it is interesting to view an interesting watch i would put it on the watch list but again not a really horror don't expect any blood or violence just mystery suspense uh, moving on. This was a horror. The Perfection. 2019. It's on Netflix. Uh, critic rating 73%. Audience rating 59. I went into this knowing absolutely nothing. I didn't look at the description. I didn't look at nothing. I didn't look at any online reviews. Nothing zero. I just went in cold. And that's probably the best way to go in this. How do I even begin to describe this? These two friends out in Paris, I'm guessing. And they're ones competing for this spot in this elite school for celloists. <laughs> and the other one is like a former celloist, but didn't quite achieve all the greatness she could have, but they become friends. And then there are the two girls. And then the girls are banging, scissoring, or whatever they do. 
And then they go on this trip together, and one starts getting really sick. Like, oh god, another zombie movie. No, no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> when, <laughs> she's not just getting sick, she's losing her mind. And uh, it takes, uh, takes a dark turn there. It takes a dark, a dark turn to Darkville. Yeah, to, to Evil Land. But um, boy, this movie, it's... But it continues to unravel, unravel like a layer on an onion, just more layers and more layers, and it gets darker and darker and sinister and sinister. I would definitely put it on the watch list. Yes, you have to see this movie at some point. But, <laughs> yeah, I don't know even what else to say about that. But if, uh, yeah, moving on, our retro review. I might have to do a whole show of retro movies because I've been watching a lot of 80s horror lately. So at some point, that might happen. But um, our retro movie for this one is The Wolfen. 1981. Uh, critic rating of 75%. Audience rating of 46%. Stars Albert Finney. It also had a small role from Reginald Vell Johnson who was a cop in Die Hard and was the dad in the show Family Matters that lasted like 15 seasons. The show with Urkel, remember that? Yeah. He was like a uh, was like a coroner or some, something. He had a small little role pushing the dead body around. But yeah, interesting. How about the movie itself? These wolves. Um, oh, getting the telephone call. I'll be right back. Okay, moving on. Here we go. Um, these wolves are attacking people in New York City, I believe. It's a big city. I think it's New York City. I think it was New York City. Might have been Chicago. Anyway. And Albert Finney is kind of a semi-retired detective who gets kind of thrown onto the case. And... Yeah, the, the, the intermittently there's these wolf attacks that they air and it's shown from the perspective of or the POV of the wolf as they hunt down people that kind of wander into the the netherlands of the of the city the the demolished area the, the bad part of town you know but um yeah so he's uh <laughs> Edward James Olmos. I didn't. I didn't want to bring this up, but I have to. Edward James Olmos. You probably know from Stand and Deliver, the teacher. How do I reach these kids? Well, he's very young in this, and he spends a lot of time wandering around naked. So if you want to see that, that's in this film. <sighs> but um, so Albert Finney has to figure out what's going on with these wolves and try to stop it, and yada yada yada. <sighs> It's it's okay. It's it's okay for desperate. So doesn't really hold up, and it wasn't really. I can see it was that great to begin with, but it's there, and it's not going anywhere. And you can watch it whenever. Um, last film, it stains the sand red. Stains the Sand Red from 2017, a critic rating of 64%, amazingly a low audience score of 38%. I thought this was amazing. I thought this was easily one of the best zombie films I've ever seen. One of the reviews had it as the, the best zombie film since 28 Days Later. I think it's probably top three all time. It's amazing. This, um... Chick and her boyfriend or, or pimp or whatever. They're driving across the desert and the car breaks on. Oh, getting another call. Okay, so this chick and her boyfriend, their car breaks down in the desert and um, this lone zombie 
is attacking them and he immediately kills the boyfriend this is all in the trailer again not giving away anything there is a movie that will be in the near future that I will completely spoil but that'll be in the weeks to come and I'll explain as I get to it but um that's a different story but um this one is this then it's this, this whole movie is this one zombie chasing this chick throughout the desert and it's amazing amazingly fun it's pedal to the metal like intensity the entire time it does not let up <laughs> and it does take a few twists and turns towards the end which I don't know if I liked but still the destiny uh, what's the what's the saying the, the the journey was better than the destination that's what I'll say about this one but it still needs to be watched I definitely put it at the top of the watch list and um yeah wow and I've seen you know Walking Dead I've seen all those zombie stuff I you know I, you know I don't hate zombie stuff but this was really good okay let's talk about the next show we got Cold Moon a movie made in Mount Pleasant called the El Unwelcoming House Un easy for me to say the Unwelcoming House it's about this guy that gets attacked by a demon in his house and he's trying to single-handedly get rid of it. And then we have a comedy horror called Some Guy Who Kills People. Then we have a John Goodman movie called Captive State. And then we got uh, one called The Hamiltons. Then the uh, 2019 movie called The Vanishing, which stars, uh, what's his face? The guy from 300, whatever his name is. I don't remember. Gerard Butler, is that his name? Maybe? Mm. Then we got a um, Hulu original film called They Come Knocking about black-eyed kids. I have heard some stories about black-eyed kids on that radio show Coast to Coast. These are supposed to be you no know, real stories. Black-eyed kids are dangerous. Do not go messing with black-eyed kids. If you're out at 3 in the morning and some black-eyed kid approaches you and says, Hey, can you give me a ride to wherever you say no? You say, sorry, little kid. Your eyes are black. Something's wrong. Go away. And then the retro review in the next one is Dead End Driving. The trailer looks amazing. So we'll give that a view and a review. <laughs> but, um, yep, uh, that's all we got. Uh, I'll talk to you later. <laughs>